You can create structural member reporting tables to control how framing members report to the materials list. If we go up to edit and then down to default settings and then double click on structural member reporting, here you can see all of the default structural member reporting tables. There's going to be a buy list, a cut list which will display all the individual board pieces present in the plan, linear length which will group together like board sizes and show you the total length of that board size you need, such as telling you how many feet of a 2x4 or 2x6 board that you may need, and mixed reporting. Over on the right hand side you can edit a list, copy or convert a list, and rename or delete a list. Additionally, you can import and export structural member reporting tables. Let's take a look at the buy list by clicking on edit. Here you can see the length units that we're currently using. And then down below you can see the board sizes. Starting on the left, you can see the actual thickness and actual depth of the boards and the length of the board that you'll buy. Next, you can see the type of board it is, such as if it was lumber or an eye joist, whether it is treated, and the price of the board. Let's look at these settings further by selecting a 2x6 board that's 8 feet long. So I know that a 2x6 is actually going to have a thickness of an inch and a half and an actual depth of 5.5 inches. So we're going to scroll down in our table until we find one of these boards that is 8 feet long. With that board selected, on the right hand side a few more options become available. If we click on edit, we can make edits to this board specification. If we click on new, a copy of the selected board will be created and you can make any necessary modifications to it and this board will be added to the buy list. And you can also delete board sizes for any boards you know that you will not be buying. You can also increase or decrease the priority of how boards report to the materials list. So let's talk about how this works and for simplicity purposes, let's focus on our 2x6 studs. So with these 2x6 studs that are actually an inch and a half by five and a half inches, we have seven various lengths that they come in. When the framing is built in your plan and you are ready to generate a framing materials list, the first thing Chief does is look at the framing in the plan and tries to match the boards in your plan with any boards in the structural member table that are an exact match. For example, if I had a 2x6 stud in the plan that was 8 feet long, Chief is going to match it with the 8 foot long board in this buy list since I have an exact match and display that in the materials list. The next thing Chief does is if there are any boards that are not an exact match, Chief finds the highest priority board that will accommodate that length and report that in the materials list. For example, let's say I had a 9 foot long 2x6 in the plan. Chief is going to go down the buy list and try to match it with a 9 foot long 2x6 in the buy list. Because I don't have a 9 foot long 2x6 in this buy list, Chief will find the first board with the proper length to accommodate this 9 foot long board and report that in the materials list, which in this example would be the 10 foot long board. If we decrease the priority of this 10 foot long board so that it had a lower priority than the 12 foot long board, Chief will report that we need the 12 foot long board since it is the first board in the materials list that can accommodate the 9 foot long board. Chief will also consolidate boards while taking into consideration the curve width. For this next example, let's increase the priority of the 12 foot long 2x6 so that it's the first 2x6 available in our list. Next, let's say that we had two 6 foot length 2x6 boards in the plan. 
Chief would report those boards as needing two 12-foot boards in the materials list since two 6-foot boards plus the 1 8th kerth width is 12 feet and 1 8th of an inch, which exceeds our 12-foot board length, which is the first one in the materials list. However, if we ignored the kerth width by typing in a value of 0, then Chief would report it as needing one 12-foot length board in the materials list to accommodate the two 6-foot length boards in the plan. Additionally, there are other controls for how wall plates and girts, deck planking, rim joists, and other boards that display in the materials list. You can report the actual length of the individual boards, you can report the total linear length, or you can use the longest buy list board. Let's look at an example of using the structural member reporting table to generate a framing materials list. For our plan, I know that the rooms have 10 foot ceilings, requiring a stud that is 116 and 5 eighths of an inch. So let's add this to our structural member reporting table by clicking on new, which will create a copy of our selected board. And then in the new board specification, I'm going to come down to the length and then type in 116 and 5 eighths of an inch. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add the price of $15 a board. And then I'm going to click on OK. And you can see how that gets reported to the structural member reporting table. And the next thing we need to do is make sure that this board that we just added has a higher priority than the 12 foot board. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to click on increase priority. You can see that it now has a higher priority than the 12 foot board. And I'm going to click on OK. Click on OK again. And now I have those changes saved to my buy list. Next, let's take a look at some materialist default settings that have an impact on structural member reporting. So I'm going to come over to materials list and double click on materials list. And the first thing you can do is specify what categories you want to see displayed in your materials list by checking or unchecking these boxes here. If we go over to columns, you can uncheck or check which columns with pieces of information about items are displayed in the materials list. Under options, you can choose which layer set the materials list is reporting. This can be a powerful way to have your materials list display different types of items. For example, if you wanted your materials list to only display wall framing or only display floor joists, you could create a layer set that is purpose built for this. Next, you can specify the initial structural member reporting table being used when you generate your materials list, and you can change or modify the table being used later on. You can restrict your materials list to a specific floor and control whether the materials list shows items only if they come from a supplier or if they don't come from any supplier. And then next, you can control the appearance of a live materials list and control the appearance of a report, which is a non-live material list. Let's go ahead and cancel out of the material list defaults and click on done so that we're back in the plan. And then next, let's create a materials list by going to tools, materials list, Calculate materials for all floors, and you'll also notice here you can edit your structural member reporting tables. Let's go ahead and select Calculate Materials for All Floors. And here we've generated a live materials list, and it has all the items in the entire plan. With the materials list being live, anytime the plan is updated, the materials list will also update. Let's adjust this materials list so that it only displays framing items. So I'm going to go up to the toolbar and I'm going to select the Edit Active View button. This is going to bring up the materials list specification where we can modify it. Let's go ahead and clear all the categories being displayed in it. And then we'll check that we only want to see the framing category displayed. And then let's go ahead and remove the column for the floor by going to the columns panel on the left and then unchecking floor. And by unchecking floor, we're just gonna consolidate the materials list a little bit further. 
And then if you wanted to adjust the structural member reporting cable being used, you could click on options, change it here, or make your adjustments here. And let's go ahead and click on OK to this. And here we have our materials list only displaying our framing. Up towards the top, you can see those boards that we added that are 2x6s that are 116 and 5 eighths of an inch long, which is 9 foot 8 and 5 eighths of an inch. You can see a description of how it's being used, the count, the price per board that we added, and the total cost for that row. And if we scroll down the materials list, you can see the total cost for this materials list. If you wanted to adjust the structural member reporting table being used, you can quickly do so using this drop down towards the top left hand corner. Additionally, next to this drop down, there's going to be an option to save the active view, which will save your materials list so that you can reopen it later. Let's go ahead and give our materials list a unique name. And click on save. And then if we close that materials list, we can reopen it at any time by going over to the project browser, expanding the plan in the project browser, going down to the materials list folder, and expanding the subfolder for live materials list, and double clicking on that materials list. Next, let's close the project browser. And if you wanted to adjust the layers being displayed in this materials list, you can open up the active layer display options towards the top right hand corner and then make the necessary adjustments to the layer sets or individual layers being displayed. Let's go ahead and close out of this and next let's create a report. Creating a report creates a copy of the materials list and freezes it or makes it non-live, meaning the report will not update if your model updates. To create a report, go up to Tools, Materials List, Generate a Report. And here the program has created a report from that materials list. The program automatically saves reports in your project browser, so you can go ahead and close it. And then if you open up the project browser, you can see that we now have a folder for reports, and if we expand that, you can see the report, you can right click on it, and rename it if you need to give it a very specific name, or open it up and continue working on it. And that's going to conclude this video.